this is the substring command. And this is going to start off real easy, but it's going to get a lot more complicated. And I'm going to show you from the beginning to the end of this. Stay with me. I'll even show you some things and you go, Tom, why would I ever do that? And I go, it's to prove a point. So stay with your man here. Now, I'm going to select the first name of our car. I'm going to substring the first name from two, four, three, which means, hey, of this character string, I want you to start in position two, and then I want you to go for three positions. So the name Squiggy will start in position two, which is the Q, and it's like hopping three times. Q-U-I comes back. Starting position, for how many positions should I go? And that's the basics of the substring command. So I want you to remember that the substring command will substring a column for a starting position and for how many positions that it should count. Now, what I want you to see here is that we're saying substring first name from two and we go, where's the positions to count? There is none, so it's going to default to the end. Now, this is that weird part where you say, Tom, really? Why would I ever do this? There's a little bit of a reason here. It's to prove a point that I want you to visually see about the substring. Now, I'm going to select the first name, substring first name from zero, for six. You see, the first position is always one. So when I go zero, it actually moves one to the left in outer space. There's nothing there. So saying zero for six is exactly like saying one for five, except there's actually going to be a space in front. So you can actually take a substring and say, I want to start in position one at the beginning, or two, or three, or four, or you can actually say, I want to go the opposite direction and go past where it was and start this way. So the point is, as you will see soon, in a substring, you can move right or left. It goes both ways. I really want to make this point very clear. I'm going to select first name, substring first name from minus one for three. So again, it takes squiggy and says, well, wait, position one would be the S. Position zero would be outer space, one in front of it. And minus one is two spaces in front of squiggy. So it's going to return, since it's going for three, space, space, S. Here's another point that I really want to make. Take a look at this gem of a beauty. Here I'm selecting first name, then I'm substringing first name from three. So with squiggy, we would start with SQ. We'd start with the U, but we're going for zero. So nothing comes back from the report. You see the substring has a starting position and then how many positions should I go to return? And you can see if you put a zero, nothing's coming back. Some people call me Tara Tom. Some people call me Tom. One's a little bit shorter. Here you can see that I'm using the substring command and that's the one I prefer. But there's substir. That's a little bit shorter, but it does the exact same thing. Substring syntax, I'm going to substring first name from two, four, three. Of course, we know that says start in position two and go for three positions. But substir is just a little bit different. It's substir first name, comma, two, comma, three. And those are equivalent commands. The greatest gift of all that you can give yourself and your company is the gift of the Nexus Query Chameleon, the query tool of the future. Hi, this is Tom Coffin. Thank you so much for watching the video. Please hit subscribe to make sure you're kept up to date on all our videos.